this wedding trend. It reminds me of a word that begins with T and ends in Aki. We are going to go into that today, but first, my name is Katie Sauter and I am a wedding planner. I have a free wedding planning timeline linked in the description below if you are planning your wedding. If you are just here for the ride, well, welcome. Don't forget to peck that like button on the cheek and smooch that subscribe button. Keep it BG from me as always, oh guys. Now, what is the trend I'm talking about? Okay, the trend that I am talking about is making your guests pay for your wedding. I think some of you have probably heard this on like Good Morning America. If I, I mean, I don't know if anyone our age listens to that, but I don't, but I found it on Good Morning America. I heard it on NPR, wait, wait, don't tell me, the NPR news quiz, which tells you what kind of nerd I am. And then I also received it in my email inbox from the New York Times. It was like the headline of couples are making their guests pay for their wedding. And I hate this trend. I hate this trend. I, I think it is the tackiest trend that is happening right now. So where is this all beginning? So one couple recently did a wedding where they were like, well, people will pay to attend a Beyonce concert. So why wouldn't they pay hundreds for hours? And then they had a really, really fabulous wedding in downtown New York. And they were like, we saved $70,000. And I, people did attend. How else would you save the 70,000? But I'm kind of like, whoa, that's a lot of people to save 70,000, $70,000 at a rate of $330 per guest. That is, let me do some math. That is 212 guests. That's a lot. I mean, I'm not gonna knock that. I mean, I don't know 212 people that I would invite to my wedding, but I am also not like, I don't have a huge family, so, and neither did my husband. Still, let's talk about that because honestly, you are not Beyonce or Jay-Z. You like it <laughs> if you are Beyonce, but hey. I'm flattered you're watching. So I, I kind of get where this started though, because it is like obnoxiously expensive to have a wedding. The average cost of a wedding is a roughly $30,000 right now. And that is exorbitant for the majority of people. Can, majority of people cannot afford that. So I kind of get why people would be like, let's make our guests pay for our wedding. And so this, just to clarify, this is not a one-off situation. This isn't just one couple who did it. There is another couple that the New York Times talks about that's charging $450 for their guests to attend their wedding. I'm just, it's just so tacky. And, and especially in a time where guests are paying so much just to attend a wedding. So just to find some concrete numbers for you guys, in 2023, it was $35,000 was the average cost of a wedding, which is a huge, that is a huge $5,000 jump from the year before in 2022. And sorry, I don't have more recent statistics, but it's, it's becoming very expensive. And a lot of the reason is because of inflation. A lot of vendors are are struggling and they're seeing a decline in in clients coming to them. And that could be for a number of reasons, right? Partly because of cost, but the, it, it's hard as a, as a wedding vendor to be like, well, I can't just charge the same amount that I was last year because my expenses also went up. So how do I cover my expenses and my overhead and how do I pay my employees? And that becomes really challenging as a business owner. As a client, that becomes really, really hard too because you have to struggle with everyone else's burden at the same time. Like literally no one is winning right now. Like I would never bash anyone in the wedding industry for that kind of money increase because they are also struggling just like the rest of us. And frankly, they love this job. I love this job. It is a wonderful job. But yeah, I get why people don't want to spend $35,000 on their wedding and why they might want to foot the bill for someone else. The thing is $330, $450, that, that's huge. That's a huge amount of dollars for a wedding. And especially at a time when people are now considering not even attending a wedding at all just because of the cost. I found an article that was taking a deeper dive into the wedding etiquette and how it's actually changing amid higher costs. In July of 2024, datingnews.com did a poll of over a thousand Americans. Now these Americans were definitely, it was like a decent study. It was a mixed group of ages and genders. So it's pretty equal in that way. But 54, 54% of wedding guests are now feeling like attending a wedding alone is too expensive. To make your guests pay, 
is is just it's so tacky and it's especially when they can barely come anyway according to datingnews.com one in three americans skipped a wedding just because it was too expensive for them to attend and over one in ten of those americans so like more than 10 percent found that they went into debt just to attend a wedding it's just it's so much and then to to show that on average, Americans spend over $1,100 to be like in the wedding party, like as a bridesmaid or groomsman. It's a huge amount of money to be putting and footing on your guests. The average spend for a local wedding for a guest is about $360, whereas for an out of town, it's closer to 900. This is a lot of money for like just attending a wedding. and. I just, I don't have words. I feel like I should have words, but I just have rage. It's just, it's, it's so tacky. And I, you know, I'm not supposed to judge as a wedding planner, but but I am. I guess I'm human. I, 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 I'm flawed. And then to top it off, another like 30% feel that people don't put affordable options on their registries for gifts. A lot of the time, and I've seen this, some people are like, give us an entire furniture set that's worth over a thousand dollars. And it's like, yeah, sorry, you're my friend from high school. I, I can't. Do you have something less expensive? And then it'll be like a trash can. I'm like, I feel weird about gifting a trash can. I just do. <laughs> they also found in their survey that 42% of guests who could not attend didn't even send a gift, which tells you a little bit about the financial stress that's happening for everybody. You are supposed to send a gift when you're invited to a wedding, even if you can't attend. But that's like etiquette. Obviously, no one is obligated to give a gift ever. And then another like whopping 30% of guests feel like they've been invited only because the couple has wanted to get money or a gift from you, the person attending. And I can see that. I I feel like I have felt the same way at some point in my young adulthood. So I, I do get that. There's just a lot of stress, I think, financially for everyone right now. And I just don't think that making guests foot the bill is, is a viable solution. I think there are so many better solutions that you can do instead of making the guests foot the bill. Have fewer guests. Like, it's okay to not invite your second cousin once removed. You don't have to invite everyone. If you're like, yeah, we're really tight, only invite your first cousins. And if they can't bring their kids, it just is what it is. I mean, that's what I did for my wedding and I felt bad that they couldn't attend, but ultimately that's what I needed to do to stay in my budget. What I find both shocking and also not is that 72% of Gen Z do not think that you have to give a gift when you attend a wedding, compared to 44% of boomers who feel that way. I just feel like you, as a zillennial, I, I consider myself somewhere between a millennial and a Gen Zer because I was born in late 94. I feel that you should give a gift. And maybe that that's my personal opinion. I would never expect it for like a destination wedding because you're already like spending so much money just to get there. But for like a local wedding where they didn't have to drive very far, kind of do expect a gift. I feel like that, but it doesn't need to be very much. It could be like just a wonderful card. It could be like the, the gift doesn't have to be very big. I feel like it just has to say, congratulations, we love you. That's all it needs to be. So some solutions to not have to make your guests foot the bill. I have two videos where I've talked about how to save money on a wedding and I highly recommend checking those out first. That would be this one and this one. But ultimately what I really want to say is reducing your guest count go opting for chicken instead of steak. There's there's so many ways you can reduce the cost. Another option would be to choose a beautiful venue that doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but it's already so beautiful, you barely need to decorate anything anyway. These are all wonderful options. You could also do digital invitations, which also saves on paper. It's the more eco-friendly option, and it's also instantaneous. These are all good alternatives to save you money, and I would highly recommend any of them. If you enjoyed this video and my rage, then you might enjoy some of my other videos. Check them out.